Hi everyone, my name is pierre and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer for the Google Ads API. Welcome to the Optimization Score and Recommendation Series. In this episode, I cover the technical aspects of applying and dismissing recommendations. For a complete list of the resources and previous episodes, please check the video description. I will do some live coding that requires a basic knowledge of Google Ads API mutates and reports. Feel free to check our technical guides if you need a refresher. All right, let's start with a quick reminder of what we already discussed in previous episodes. An optimization score below 100% means that there is room for improvement. In such a case, the Google Ads API may share recommendations. Each recommendation represents one change that can be applied to optimize the performance of campaigns. Eligible recommendations are retrieved in real time using the recommendation resource type. They come with many details, such as impact metrics and related entity IDs, and they can be applied or dismissed. Applying or dismissing recommendations is instantaneous and directly impacts the optimization score. Eligible recommendations become ineligible when they are applied or when the eligibility criteria are no longer met. So, how do we apply or dismiss recommendations using the Google Ads API? I prepared a few code examples to demonstrate it with the most common scenarios. Please note that I use the client library for PHP, but the logic is the same for all client libraries. Also, I use keyword recommendations here because I have plenty of them in my testing accounts and they are pretty easy to roll back. But the logic is the same with any other recommendation types that are fully supported by the Google Ads API. Recommendations are read only. To act on them, we need to use the custom mutate methods provided by the recommendation service, apply recommendation and dismiss recommendation. In this first code example, we want to apply an eligible keyword recommendation. To do so, we authenticate, retrieve the recommendation to apply, send a mutate request with the right operation and print the result. We already discussed how recommendations can be retrieved in another episode of this series. Feel free to watch it to learn more. In this example, we use a method that I already implemented. It retrieves and returns a single eligible keyword recommendation from the authenticated account. To apply, we need to use the method apply recommendation from the recommendation service. Like most mutate requests, we need to set the customer ID and the operations we want to execute. Here, we only have one recommendation to apply, so we only need one operation. The operation needs to be of a certain type, apply recommendation operation. And the only mandatory field is the resource name of the recommendation to be applied. In this case, we use the resource name of the recommendation instance we retrieved previously. Also, we could apply the recommendation with customized parameters, but here we keep it simple and use the parameters that are recommended by Google. When successful, the mutate request comes back with the resource name of the recommendation that was applied. I'm printing it in the following step. Applying is instantaneous and has an impact on the optimization score and the eligibility of recommendations. For illustration purposes, let's print the optimization score and the number of eligible recommendations for the account before and after the apply request. I'm using a method that I already implemented for this. If I execute it for a serving customer, the recommendation retrieved is successfully applied and its resource name is printed. It had a positive impact on the optimization score of the account and the number of eligible recommendations decreased by one. This makes sense because the recommendation that was applied is no longer eligible. Now let's try applying the exact same recommendation again. To do this, I use the recommendation resource name printed in the results instead of searching for an eligible keyword recommendation. This time, it fails with a recommendation already applied error, as expected. Another common error occurs when a different recommendation was applied and it invalidated the recommendation we wanted to apply. For example, if a campaign has a budget raising recommendation, and the account also has a recommendation for budget reallocation, if one is applied such that the campaign is no longer budget constrained, the other is invalidated. 
Let me execute the example again with a recommendation I know is invalidated. This time it fails with a recommendation invalidated error, as expected. To avoid errors, you should only apply recommendations that have been recently retrieved. When a recommendation is successfully applied, the Google Ads API makes changes to entities on your behalf. These changes can be retrieved like any other from the change history of the account. In the particular case of the keyword recommendation that we applied earlier, an ad group criterion was added. We can see the change by searching and printing the latest ad group criterion change made in the account using the change event report. If I execute it for a serving customer, we find the change that was made when we executed the previous code example. Please note that the change event service that we are using has limitations. It can take up to a few minutes for changes to surface, and not all the types of changes are supported. You can check the account management guide to learn more. A few other things to keep in mind is that a single recommendation may lead to multiple modifications depending on its type, and the changes do not contain information about the recommendation that initiated them. All right, now, what about dismissing recommendations? As you can see in this new code example, the overall logic is pretty similar to applying a recommendation. We still need to provide the recommendation resource name to dismiss in the operation, and the result still returns the resource name. The main difference is that we need to use the method dismiss recommendation and a dismiss recommendation operation. Let's execute it with another eligible keyword recommendation. The recommendation is successfully dismissed and its resource name is printed. It had a positive impact on the optimization score of the account, but this time the number of eligible recommendations remains the same as before. It makes sense because a dismissed recommendation remains eligible. Like for the apply, the most common errors occur when the recommendations are dismissed a long time after being retrieved. For example, we get an error when dismissing a recommendation that was already dismissed. This time, it fails with a recommendation already dismissed error. Lastly, let's try applying the recommendation that we just dismissed with this other code example. The recommendation is successfully applied and its resource name is printed. The number of eligible recommendations decreased by 1, but this time, the optimization score of the account was not impacted. It makes sense because the optimization score of the account was already positively impacted when the recommendation was dismissed in the past. All the scenarios that we discussed so far take actions based on recommendation directly from the recommendation service. One alternative is to take indirect actions by using other services such as the campaign service or the ad group service. There are a few things that you should consider before developing this kind of solution. Recommendations can be applied using customized parameters, so there is usually no need to use other services if recommendations need to be refined. It is much more costly to manage recommendations using services other than the recommendation service. The optimization score and eligible recommendations are not updated instantaneously. It can take a few days for indirect actions to be fully taken into account. It also makes it more challenging for Google to enhance the accuracy of future recommendations. All right, we covered the most common scenarios that you may encounter when taking actions based on recommendations. Let's take a step back and quickly summarize the key takeaways. You can either use direct actions via the recommendation service or indirect actions via other services. Direct actions are preferred for easier development and maintenance and for better efficiency and predictability. All direct action requests send and return recommendation resource names. Here is an example of a dismiss. A recommendation can be applied with customized parameters if needed. The change history contains the changes initiated by applied recommendations. You can use the change status and change event reports to access them when they are supported. But these changes do not contain any information regarding the recommendations themselves. For example, it's impossible to check when recommendations became dismissed or invalidated and it's impossible to know if a given change was initiated because a recommendation was applied. Now, here is the complete life cycle of recommendation. I've broken down the two main states with more details, eligible and ineligible. It's important to note that 
when a non-dismissed recommendation is applied. Both the optimization score and the eligible recommendations are instantaneously updated. Same thing when a non-dismissed recommendation is dismissed. Both the optimization score and the eligible recommendations are instantaneously updated. But only the optimization score changes this time, because a dismissed recommendation remains eligible. This is also why a dismissed recommendation can be applied. When it's applied, both the optimization score and the eligible recommendations are instantaneously updated. But only the number of eligible recommendations changes this time, because the uplift associated with the recommendation was already taken into account when the recommendation was dismissed in the past. Now, let me clarify a few things that are impossible to do today with recommendations. A dismissed recommendation cannot be undismissed. Taking actions on ineligible recommendations will always fail. The best practice is to take actions on recommendations as soon as possible after retrieving them. The longer the wait, the more chance there is to end up with failures because of an invalidation or concurrent apply. It's impossible to undo an applied recommendation using the recommendation service. And last, it is impossible to apply a recommendation as a draft or as an experiment using the recommendation service. All right, that's all for this topic. If you are interested in this type of integration, you can check other dedicated resources listed here and check the other episodes of this series. Thank you for watching. I will see you in other videos.